right. Roll up them. Getting there. Okay. I don't know who Galaxy A12 is. Miss Conco? She's in a car. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, we'll go ahead. Can we are we on the record? Yep. Took the while. On the record. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Drug Court. I'm Judge Martin. Sorry for the delay. We have all new computers, which means they work half as fast as the really old ones we had. So it's I've been sitting here for 15 minutes logging on. Um, We've got one person on Zoom. Let me address first. Is that Miss Kunkel Galaxy A12? Yes, yes, it is. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know how to change my name on here. That's okay. It's not a problem. Um, but uh, congratulations. We understood that you got the official word on Tuesday that you had graduated Jill's place. Yes, and I'm actually sitting in the probation office right now. I had just met with uh, my probation officer and we went over everything. Okay. So yeah, okay. thank you. Well, good. I actually just signed for you a certificate uh, recognizing that you have completed uh, the in-court portion of drug court. Now you're in what I know you termed last time aftercare, which is the, the year of probation and David Lawrence that um, we follow up just to kind of make sure that everything goes well after the, the extreme structure. So you've had Jill, Jill's place, uh, but I think it'll work out really well to have this sort of uh, uh, supportive tail that'll come off the end of, of, just, of Jill's place. So I have a certificate for you. I also have a letter for you that just sort of explains exactly what's going on, um, how post drug court probation works and just reminding you that the rules, the sobriety rules, all that stays the same. Uh, we have already signed an order that dismissed your violation of probation. So for court smarts purposes, Ms. Kunkel was on the docket until I think yesterday, but she's shown up because she wanted to verify and that's smart. Uh, but she, you are not even on the docket because the case has already been. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Judge Martin. For no everything. worries. We should be uh, starting in July. We'll be back in court in person. So when you get back to call your county, if you ever find yourself free on a Tuesday afternoon, feel free to stop by. The whole team will be back in person. We're very excited about that. Uh, anything at all that you need, just speak up. And I know David Lawrence Center will be in touch with you anyway. Okay, awesome. Sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Good. Congratulations and welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Okay, and that leaves uh, two folks on our docket. And Ms. Farrell, for the state, you want to call the docket? Yeah, I think we start with Vivian Lee. That's the case one. 18 CF 412. Mr. Reed, good morning. Good morning, Caroline. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. I know Mr. Darrow's been working on things. Let me turn to him and get a little bit of an update. Um, let, me, let me let Mr. Reed know that, that I did respond to the email um, that your assistant sent. I have all the answers in, in there, and, and I'm going to set something to talk to you before we actually resolve the case. Um, but just very quickly, project recovery has already been ordered. The order was entered right. two days ago. Yes. And I know you complied, so you, you should be very top of the list for that. Um, as far as the court goes, Judge, um, Mr. Reed is going to be doing project recovery. I actually think it's going to be necessary for him to finish that before we even resolve the case. Okay. Um, so, absent of something different from him, uh, I would go ahead and ask for a continuance. Uh, but we can put it out maybe three or four weeks just to see where we're at at that point. Okay. Um, let me get my calendar. Are you not able to hear, Mr. Reed? No, I'm not. I didn't hear too much of what Mr. Darrow said. Oh, that's just not going to be true. Okay, you might just have to get closer to that oh, mic. This, this mic. Can you hear me better now? Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, no, project recovery has been ordered. Um, okay. I did respond to your email and I'll set something up to talk to you. 
Um, but for now, whichever route we go with which of the deals you take, you need to do project recovery first. So go ahead and get started on that. You should be at the top of the list. I'm just going to ask the judge to roll this out three or four weeks like we talked about. Okay. All right. And so um, let me just look at the calendar and see where that takes us on to July uh, 8th. I think it's going to be because I've got I've got one week or four. So uh, let's go to July 8. I think that's what we discussed in staffing. All right. So I'll go to uh, July 8. And um, and like uh, Mr. Darrow said, I have ordered project recovery. So uh, make sure that you request it and follow all the instructions for homework and application and so forth. And um, when they let you in, get to work and we'll check back with you in a few weeks. OK. Thank you. All right, Mr. Reed, good luck. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is Ms. Schenk. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, and Ms. Schenk uh, is here to plead into drug court. Ms. Farrell, if you want to give the overview of her offer. In 21 CF 156, Ms. Schenk is going to be entering a plea of no contest to the lesser included charge as to the burglary of a burglary of a structure. That statute number is 810.02 subsection 4 and to the charge as charged of petty theft third or more. The terms will be an adjudication of guilt on both counts, four years of state probation, the first two which will be on drug offender probation, both counts to run concurrent. Special conditions of probation will be to enter and successfully complete drug court following all treatment recommendations. Having a curfew from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. unless that's modified by the court or probation, attending recovery group, group support meetings if directed by her case manager to do so, and also providing the case manager with truthful reaction sheets to those meetings, again, if directed to do so. They'll be testing for alcohol controlled substances and unapproved medications at a minimum of one time per week by probation and one time per week by treatment. There'll be no possession or consumption of alcohol nor frequenting any places that primarily sell or serve alcohol. There's $100 cost of prosecution, court costs, and $577.25 cost of investigation to the sheriff. Other special conditions of probation are that the defendant shall have no contact with the confidential victim and no trespass at confidential address. And Your Honor, for the record, all of the names and addresses are in the drug court contract. Okay. We are filing a notice of confidential filing as it pertains to the contract. The individual orders are confidential with the information and purposes that we need to have redacted. Okay. The defendant will also pay restitution to the confidential victim in the amount of $300. That will be paid at a minimum of $75 per month, beginning 30 days from her release from custody. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Darrow, was all of that consistent with your negotiation? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Schenk, uh, did you did you hear everything the prosecutor just explained to me? Yes. Did you understand all of that? Yes. Was all of that familiar to you? Have you gone over all those terms with your counsel? Yes. And do you want to accept those terms and resolve both of these charges by coming into drug court today? Would you raise your right hand to be sworn in, please? All right, the state attorney is going to ask you some questions to qualify your plea. Do you have any issues reading or writing in English? No. 
Do you suffer from any mental health issues? No. At this time, are you under the influence of any alcohol? No. Are you under the influence of anything that is not prescribed to you by a doctor? No. Are you taking any medication that is prescribed to you? No. And Ms. Schenck, in case number 21 CF 156, you were originally charged with burglary of a dwelling and petty theft. That's the third or more. The original charge of burglary of a dwelling was a second degree felony that carried a maximum penalty of 15 years in state prison. You understand that as a condition of the plea, the state is willing to allow you to plead to a lesser charge of burglary of a structure. That's a third degree felony carrying a maximum penalty of five years in state prison. Do you understand that difference? Um, I, I understand. Do you want, I'm fine. Do you want me to repeat it again? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't know, like, what you were asking. Okay, I just... Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Well, you have to place on the record that you understand your original charge carried a 15-year maximum. The charge you're pleading to now yeah. carries a five. Do you understand the difference? Oh, right, 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 yeah. Okay, and you also have your petty theft third. That also carries a maximum of five years in prison if you violate your probation. Do you understand that? Yes. So how do you wish to plead to the reduced charge of burglary of a structure and petty theft third? Do you want to plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Have you had an opportunity to read a plea form while you were waiting for us? I have. You understand all the rights that you're giving up on that, that are listed on the front of that form by entering a plea here today? Do I? I'm sorry. Do you understand all the rights that are listed on the front of that form that you're giving up by pleading today? Yes. You understand that as a result of your plea, there will be no trial. The state will no longer be required to prove you guilty of your charges beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury. You understand that's the first right that you give up? Yes. You understand that by giving up your right to have a trial, you give up your right to see the state's witnesses testify and have your attorney question them. You understand that? Yes. You also understand that you're giving up your right to call any witnesses in your own defense, to present any defenses to the jury, and to testify if you chose to do so. Understand that right as well? Yes. And Mr. Chair, are you reserving any matters for a few on this case? No. And Ms. Shank, have you had an opportunity to go over a score sheet with Mr. Darrell or your other assigned public defender? I did. And have you had an opportunity to at least be told what the changes are now that the charge is being reduced? Yes. Because you understand that prior to the reduction of the charge, you were looking at a mandatory prison sentence. Do you understand that? Right. And, yeah. now, and now you're not. However, should you violate your probation, again, you can be sentenced up to 10 years in prison if everything were to be run consecutively. Yes. And did you review your prior history that's on the score sheet? I did. And are you in agreement that that's correct? Yes. And Mr. Darrow, we're now looking at 30.9 points as opposed to a mandatory prison sentence. Is that correct? Correct. I did confirm with Mr. Dixon that he reviewed the score sheet. Okay. And Ms. Schenck, has anybody promised you anything other than the plea agreement terms to get you to enter a plea today? No. Anybody forced you, coerced you, or threatened you in any way to get you to enter a plea? No. Are you playing because you believe it's in your best interest to do so? Yes. Have you had enough time to discuss the plea, all the terms, and all the rights you're giving up with your attorneys? Yes. Do you have any more questions or anything that they didn't do that you want them to do prior to entering the plea? No. Can I satisfy with their advice? Yes. Ms. Jero, has someone from your office gone over all the discovery with Ms. Shank? Yes. Are you aware of any items of evidence that need to be tested for DNA that may exonerate your client? No. Ms. Shank, do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, the plea could be used against you in a deportation proceeding? Yes. Also, that if you have been in the past or are in the future convicted of any sort of sexually violent or motivated offense, that the plea could be used against you in what's called an involuntary civil commitment proceeding to be qualified under the statute as a sexually violent predator. Do you understand that warning? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. And finally, there are terms in the plea agreement that involve restitution, that $300 restitution paid at $75 per month, which will start in 30 days from your release. Do you understand that by agreeing to that amount, you're giving up your right to have a restitution hearing? Yes. Do you believe that you'll be able to have the ability to pay that $75 per month in 30 days? Uh, I 
Okay, Ms. Shank, I have read your file. I find there's a factual basis for your plea. I find that you freely, voluntarily, and intelligently waived your rights. You've knowingly entered this plea with a full understanding of the consequences. So I'll accept your plea uh, to both third degree felonies. We'll adjudicate you guilty on both of those. Uh, on each, I'll place you on four years of state probation to run concurrently. So it's a total of four years. On each, the first uh, two years will be drug offender probation. You'll have a special condition to comply with and successfully complete the drug court program. That means that everything that you have read in our handbook, have you read that very carefully? Yes, I did. Good. Everything in the handbook, plus everything I, I announced today, plus everything treatment directs you to do along the way, all of that's part of your probation that I will enforce. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Specifically today, I'm going to start by ordering the curfew that was discussed. You'll have a curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That means you've got to be at the address that you register with probation, get there no later than 10 at night, stay there all night until at least six in the morning. Be prepared to be checked on by members of the probation office and or law enforcement. They can come by at all hours of the night to make sure that you're home doing what you're supposed to be doing. Make sure that you can hear the door uh, and that you're in a position to answer that. They will have a visible badge so you know that you're opening the door to somebody who's safe, but it is important that you uh, that you respond to those curfew checks. Do you have any questions about that part? No. Your probation officer has the authority to adjust that curfew for certain necessities. Most common is employment. If you end up with a job that either requires you to leave very early in the morning or be out past 10 o'clock at night, for example, if you're working in a restaurant, uh, then you need to get a request to probation as early as possible, and they have the authority to adjust that. You won't really be able to make last second changes if you take on a restaurant job and they call you Tuesday afternoon to take up a shift that night, you're not gonna be able to get permission to change your curfew in time. So get your headset for um, having to think ahead a little bit, plan ahead and get your permission in advance. If you, and probation will explain their process to you for making those requests. Um, if you get permission for a change, just follow the change time strictly. And if you don't hear back on a request, you got to treat that as a no. Keep your regular curfew until you get explicit permission uh, to make a change. Do you have any questions about any of that? All right, the next part is meetings. That may or may not be part of the treatment plan that David Lawrence makes for you. But if they do order you to do meetings, then you'll be obligated, of course, to comply with that and with anything else they recommend. Uh, they will give you sheets to document your meeting attendance. You'll need to do that truthfully. Uh, they will let you know all the various types of meetings, the times, places. Uh, some meetings are still happening by Zoom. Uh, a great number are now in person, which is wonderful. And whatever treatment directs that you do on that, you'll have to follow that and honestly report that. Do you understand that obligation? Yes. All right. Next is a, a requirement that you've already done or at least started, which is the clinical assessment. I think they saw you by video conference. Is that right? Yes. And so you're going to follow all the treatment recommendations that came from that initial assessment. Additionally, that assessment will be repeated throughout your time with us to make adjustments as your needs change. As you get deeper into the treatment process, uh, you may need more of one thing, less of another. And so treatment, uh, David Lawrence Center will constantly be reassessing and adjusting those recommendations. Your job is to follow absolutely anything that they recommend in terms of treatment. Um, I will note as well that that is pretty broad. It's not just substance abuse treatment. Uh, I know you said you're not on any medication uh, and you don't have a mental health background, but if when you get in there working with the experts, if they perceive something and they want you to have an evaluation for mental health support or for medication support or anything else, you'll need to follow through with that. And likewise, if, uh, if after we get to working with you, 
Uh, it turns out that maybe there's a medical issue that you have been neglecting. I know that's common with a lot of folks who've been using for many years. Um, then we're also going to push you to address medical situations. We're here to take care of the whole Kayla Shank and try to help her get uh, get better. And staying clean um, is about a thousand times easier if you feel good, if you're taking care of your mind, your body, and your spirit. So we're gonna work on all of that. Whatever treatment recommends, you would need to follow through. Do you have any questions about that obligation? All right, next is the uh, are the sobriety rules. You can't possess or consume any alcohol, can't have any alcohol in your home, can't go to any bars or places that primarily make their money from alcohol. You also can't possess or consume any drugs any unapproved medications or any mind altering substances. You'll be tested throughout your time with us to verify your strict compliance with all of that. And we're going to require probation to test you at least once a week and David Lawrence to test you at least once a week. So at least you've got those two tests every single week. Uh, more than likely, it'll be quite a bit more than that. Uh, we do very, very frequent and robust testing in part just to make sure that your head doesn't start to to uh, worry and wonder whether anybody would catch you if you thought about using we have pretty constant support for that so be prepared to be tested uh, from both of those probation and treatment any questions on that no. all right um i want to go back through the rule a little bit no alcohol no drugs that's pretty self-explanatory the next part was no unapproved medications. You said you're not taking anything by prescription currently, uh, but if that changes at some point during your time with us, we're simply gonna require you to follow all the instructions of the doctor, take it as prescribed. Don't take more of it or less of it than you're supposed to. Don't let it run out if you're supposed to keep it refilled and stay on it. Uh, keep up with any follow-up appointments that get set with that. Never share your medication with someone else. Never take someone else's medication. Those are actually felonies in their own right. Uh, and then the final part of that is uh, if an outside provider wants to place you on a prescription medication, we're gonna require you to disclose that right away to your case manager. Uh, if the case manager wants paperwork, you've got to get it and deliver it to him or her promptly. Uh, what we are looking to do there is to coordinate your care. We won't stand in the way of your medical care, but really any prescription medication that you might be prescribed, even completely innocently, uh, could interfere with your recovery and what you're trying, <coughs> excuse me, with what you're trying to do with us. So uh, as you may or may not know, doctors in this town might give you Xanax, Ritalin, Oxycontin, any number of things if you go in and say you've got a problem, but we're really looking to avoid that as much as possible. So we're going to push, we're going to be nosy, we're going to make sure that what's being recommended is medically necessary. Uh, and if it is, then we're going to have a number of uh, structures and supports that we're going to require to ensure that you're safe on that medication. So step one, your obligation is any and all prescription medications anybody wants to put you on, even an antibiotic for a head cold, you need to let your case manager know right away about that medication and follow any instructions he or she might have with regard to that. Do you have any questions about the medication rules? I'm sorry, it broke up. Did you say no? Yeah, I said no. Okay. Um, okay, and then the final part of that was no mind altering substances. That is a catch all for everything else. Uh, and all of this is in our handbook. We include there all the designer drugs that are out there, things like spice and bath salts and whatever else they might invent tomorrow, regardless of whether it's legal or illegal for the general public, it's illegal for you because you're in drug court. We can and do test for that. Uh, and so you need to stay away from anything that is designed to ease your pain, ease your anxiety, help you sleep. All of those are mind altering substances, legal or illegal, you cannot use them. 
Another group of things are some herbal things that are out there. They are currently legal in Florida, illegal in several other states, things like kratom and kava. Uh, I noticed that there's some background in your record with opiates. Uh, kratom has been something that opioid uh, users have used as a substitute. It is illegal for you. So we can test for that. Uh, you need to stay away from anything that contains that. And be aware that there are products in the health food store right now that have Kratom in them. Just because you bought it from a regular store does not mean it's gonna be okay to consume it. You are responsible to check the ingredients of anything that you consume and make sure there's nothing in there that could cause you to have a positive drug test. If you have any questions about any given product before you buy it, just check it out with your case manager. You can pull it up on Google, look at the ingredients, and make sure it's gonna be safe for you. And then the last group of things are just things you can get in any uh, grocery store or, or drug store. Uh, things like cough and cold medications have mind altering ingredients. Um, David Lawrence Center is gonna give you a list when you meet with them of everything you can safely take for common ailments, uh, aches and pains and, and common cold or allergies, that sort of thing. They'll give you a list of things you can take safely but you do need to be careful uh, because there are mind altering ingredients in a number of those products while you are in drug court, meaning all the way until this probation successfully terminates, you are gonna have to avoid any of those ingredients. Do you have any questions about the sobriety rules? Uh, no. All right, okay. Then I'm gonna order you to have uh, no contact with the victim in this case, no trespass at her address and make restitution to her in the amount of $300. We're gonna require you to make minimum monthly payments toward that of $75. We'll give you 30 days grace period from your release from custody to get started. If you're able to start earlier and or pay faster, you're welcome to do so. But do you believe that you will be able to make at least a $75 payment each month starting 30 days after your release? Okay. Um, all right. I will also impose, and these are not urgent. The restitution is the priority, but between now and the completion of your probation, you'll have to pay a hundred dollars each for the cost of prosecution and defense of this matter, all mandatory court costs and $577 and 25 cents to the sheriff for cost of investigation. Any questions about any of those things? All right, let me go through some paperwork with you. And the confidential information goes with the contract. Is that right? Okay. Contact. Okay. Bear with me here. All right, so Mr. Darrow, the score sheet that I'm looking at, 30.9 total sentence points, translating to zero as the lowest permissible prison sentence up to a 10-year statutory maximum. Is that what you all reviewed? Any objection to me accepting and relying upon that for the plea? Okay. And uh, Ms. Shank, uh, the score sheet which you went over with your attorneys I uh, did not require you to get any sort of a prison sentence today. Um, you're getting close to having enough points, but you're not there at this point. Obviously, we don't ever want to get any closer. Um, the main thing that I need you to understand about the score sheet is that you could have faced up to 10 years in prison today. Did you understand that? Yes. And uh, you've got a probation outcome. Obviously, that's very good but avoiding any further jail or prison depends on you following through with everything that I've just ordered. So if you're brought back before me on a violation of this probation, if the prosecutor can prove a willful and substantial violation, then these penalties come back into play and you could once again face up to 10 years in prison. Do you understand how that works? Yes. Okay. All right, the next thing that I want to uh, look at is the, Ms. Darrell, do you, do you need to sign the confidential information or is that, I'll hand this back to you. It doesn't look like it's got the little S on the blank, so. 
The next thing I want to go through is the drug court contract. Um, looks like you signed this on Friday last week. Does that sound right? Did you go over a two page contract and sign it last Friday? Did you understand what you were agreeing to when you signed that? Yes. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me or your attorney, Mr. Darrow, about this contract or anything else that we've discussed today? Thirty. Okay, because you told me fifty. So. No, it's. Probably right. Uh, it might be. Would it would it have been up that much on the second degree? Okay. Yeah, so it's that because the state attorney agreed to reduce your second degree felony down to a third degree felony, it took a huge chunk off your points. Right, but if I thought it was originally 64, and then you took me to chapter 50, so it dropped down to 30. That's good news. Yeah, okay, just thinking. It's okay, Mr. Darrow has had some problems with his glasses today, so. <laughs> yes, I am looking at it, I've just signed it. 30.9 um, with the reduction of the charge to a third degree felony. So that's uh, a big, big difference. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, we went from 56 points to 22 on that charge alone. You're, you're showing um, a total of 8.2 points in priors and then your new offenses are 22.7. So that leaves you with a 30.9, which is, is much, much better than and more. Yes, absolutely. Um, Ms. Schenk, are you comfortable that you can do everything that's in this contract and everything that I have discussed with you today? Yes. You're going to have all kinds of help and your job simply is to be honest with us and let us know what you need. We're bringing you in here because we're confident you can do it, but I always like to double check that you feel the same way. You're not, you're not setting yourself up for something here, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to check the contract, make sure it says what we think it says. Paragraph three of the contract uh, is the prosecutor's promise to you. She says that when you successfully complete drug court, as well as aftercare and probation, you get restitution and all those other costs all paid, that you can ask me to terminate the probation early if you get all that done in less than four years. Uh, you understand that our program is a minimum of two years if you do everything great, you're going to spend approximately a year in the in-court portion with me, and then you would be eligible to move on, uh, and you would spend approximately a year from your moving on date just on regular probation. And once you've done all that, if everything's complete, uh, at that two-year mark, you would be able to consider asking me to terminate the probation early. Do you understand how all of that works? Yes. Okay. So you'll have no more than four years, uh, but very likely no less than two years that you'll be on probation subject to all those rules, the sobriety rules, everything that I just went through. Uh, but when, when you, uh, when I ultimately agree to terminate your probation under that contract, that'll end your obligation to the court on those charges. You do have felony convictions. Uh, and these, other than the change of the charge today, these charges will stay on your record. Do you understand all of that? Yes. Did anybody promise you anything different that you would avoid felonies or have a clean record or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. I've just got a bit more paperwork then. I'm going to sign the restitution order. And let me make sure I do this correctly. All right, so I'll initial up above and down below, and I will not sign in the clerk's space. Then no contact, same thing. There's just all kinds of fun on this. this the last one was May. This one is Foster. It's okay. Keeping me on my toes. All right, I think I have initialed both 
confidential entries. All right, I'm gonna sign an order that sets your probation fees at zero for that first year while you're in the in-court portion. That will uh, free up some money for restitution, for your treatment costs and so forth. Once you move on and you go into the second year, uh, then probation will start charging you supervision fees. I'm also going to sign an order that allows the team to discuss your confidential health care information. This basically lets David Lawrence Center share with us uh, only that information that is necessary for the rest of us to know that you're in compliance or not in compliance. So they will, for example, let us know that you showed up, that you participated, that your drug screen is clear or that it's positive. Um, they will never tell us what you're discussing with the counselors. That is absolutely between you and the counselors. And the sooner you can get comfortable telling them everything that you need to tell them, everything that they need to know to help you, the better. The rest of the team does not need to know that and we will not know that. And the information, the limited information that we will know, we will keep confidential among ourselves. That will not be shared with anyone outside of the team. Do you understand those protections? Okay, and then um, the, the last thing is the best thing, which is your order for release from custody. Uh, this is set up for Monday morning to release you to a representative of David Lawrence Center. Where are you gonna be staying when you get out? Okay, very good. Um, that's a great place to start out in drug court. They've got a lot of rules, but so do we, and most of the rules are basically the same. So it puts you in a very convenient location. You've got good access to the court, probation, David Lawrence, lots of places uh, looking to hire on this side of town. A lot of uh, places that will take people with a felony and give you work. Have you got any ideas uh, on where you might work? Okay. Okay. Well, I only have two people working at Panera right now. So you could be the third. They have so far been very good um, about understanding our routines here in drug court. So wherever you end up, just be very honest with them and upfront about your probation, about drug court, because you do not want to get in a situation where drug court's telling you they need you and the job is telling you they need you. It's a very, very easy decision. You have to pick drug court every time. We've got to be the priority. Some jobs in town are great at working with that, others not as great. So just make sure that you really pay attention and will help, uh, but pay attention to making sure that you're honest with them so that they can be appropriately supportive of what you're trying to do here. A supportive employer is gold. And uh, so far, like I said, Panera has been pretty good about that. Um, okay, so I will sign the release order and Monday morning, approximately 10 a.m., the case manager will come get you directly from the jail, take you to St. Matt's, take you to probation, um, and take you to do whatever else you need to do to get ready. Monday will probably be a long day. They tend to um, have you doing orientation and all kinds of things to get geared up. And then I will see you on Tuesday at 1.30. We've got a few more weeks of doing court like this with video conference uh, and your case manager will help make sure you've got what you need for that. Starting with the first Tuesday in July, which is July 6th, we will be back to in-person court in the courtroom. We're very excited. It's been about 15 months since we've done that. So you are, your timing is great, Ms. Shank. You're coming back to drug court uh, as uh, all of the good stuff is coming back together again. Um, last thing I need to go over with you, just a couple of uh, basic rules. We're really strict about manners here. I'm a stickler for uh, respect and, and you know good attitudes and so forth. Uh, we're gonna require you whenever you are in court or at treatment, we're gonna require you uh, not to be on your phone uh, we'll actually, when we get to everything being in person, we actually just take the phones and put them up in the front of the room so you don't have distractions. But if you're using your phone to connect, uh, as you will be for a couple of weeks, to connect with me in court, um, you're not to be texting, 
uh, reading stuff, responding to instant messages, any of that kind of stuff. Um, we'll generally, we'll tell you, put it in airplane mode so that you're just talking to us and that's it. Nobody's interrupting you. We don't want you when you're in person. We don't want you talking to your neighbor. We don't want you doing anything other than paying attention. The idea is you're going to be, uh, you're all learning from each other. And so your respect for each other, your focus and attention are critical, shows respect for yourself, for your colleagues and for the court and for treatment. While you're on that video conference, you're going to need to, like I said, this will hopefully just be a couple of times you'll do it, but you'll need to make sure you're in a quiet space where you can speak um, uh, and uh, not have a lot of distraction. You're not to be eating, drinking, smoking, vaping, playing with kids or pets or anything else. St. Matt's obviously, um, we've got other folks there, so they know the drill and that should be helpful to you. Uh, and once we're in person in just a few more weeks, uh, it's a whole lot easier obviously to behave when you're sitting in the courtroom. Although Chuck will tell you that sometimes that in, even in the courtroom, we've got to remind people to behave. But I generally, even if you're not in the courtroom, even if it's just video conference, I want you to pretend, would I be doing this if I were sitting in Judge Martin's courtroom and she were on the bench? If it's a no, you shouldn't be doing it on the video conference either. Um, and if you're doing that, then you're gonna be in good shape. We have a very simple dress code, nothing fancy, but everybody's to be appropriately covered up and uh, again, respectful. David Lawrence will go over all that with you. And then the final thing is uh, the only thing that I absolutely need you to remember from all the 9 million things I said to you today. The one rule that, that runs through everything that we do is honesty. A lot of the stuff that, that we've set forth for you is gonna be a work in progress for a while, but honesty is something you're perfectly capable of right now on day one. And so we're gonna require it. It's really the only way anybody's ever gotten clean and sober is by being honest. So that is, that is why we require it. I look at it two ways. I look at it from the front end in terms of preventing problems. What do we need to know to help you prevent a problem? So we're gonna push you to speak up about anything that's got you feeling stressed or overwhelmed. If old friends aren't leaving you alone, if you're having a hard time finding a job or St. Matt's has you stressed out for some reason, if you're having cravings and you really just want to use, those are all the sorts of things that we encourage you to be open about, tell us about, because we can help. Um, and so you've been on probation before, you've been in court before, this is 180 degrees different from anything you've done. And you got a few more nights in jail to just think about what it's going to feel like to walk out and actually just be honest about whatever's going on. Like I said, I see that you've been, you've been suffering for a long time, for a lot of years. And so I appreciate that this is a big change, but you've got a whole team that's extremely good at what they do. We're with you, we're behind you. Everybody wants to see you do well. So if you just give us the information that we need, we're not here to judge. Uh, you're not gonna freak us out, I promise. But we're gonna do everything we can to help you deal with whatever that stress is and avoid a problem and stay on the path. And then from the back end, if you actually do mess anything up, if you make any sort of a mistake, you forget to do something, you miss an appointment, uh, if you pick up and you use, all of those things also require you to be immediately honest with us. Your case manager is gonna be the first line of defense, pick up the phone and call and say, this is what happened. And if you do that, that's the best way to stay out of, out of my eyesight and stay out of my range and stay out of trouble. If you, for example, if you relapse on a Tuesday night, you need to be calling your case manager first thing Wednesday morning. Here's what happened. I messed up, you know, somebody, if somebody said something or did something or something changed, it threw me for a loop. This is what I did. This is what I used. If you do that, you will not go back into that jail. You will stay in treatment. Treatment may adjust the game plan to give you some additional support, uh, but you will not be in trouble because you were fully and promptly honest. If you only give us part of the story, uh, if you wait until we get the drug test back, uh, all of those are things that potentially will have you uh, in trouble because the honesty was not full honesty and it was not prompt honesty. You really need to be letting us know right away. I always say delayed honesty is better than no honesty, 
but I want you to know my expectations in order to take advantage of the you will not get in trouble promise. It has to be full honesty, promptly shared with a member of the team. Do you have any questions or anything you want to clarify about that? It's pretty different from the old probations you've done. I mean, I get it on the old probation. If you slipped up, you did your best to stay out of the way and hope nobody ever figured it out. But here's the thing. We drug test you constantly. We have numerous controls to make sure that you're not faking out drug tests. It's not worth the time or the effort or the worry to mess with any of that. And so hopefully all of our effort to have structure and accountability makes it even easier for you to just do the right thing and let us know what's going on. Your first thought, if you mess up, is going to be, what do I need to do? How do I avoid them finding out? Don't act. Sit tight. Take a couple of breaths. The next thought that comes along is going to be, I need to call my case manager. That's the one you want to act on. Okay. That's the answer to the final exam of recovery. If you can do that, you're going to succeed in everything that we ask you to do. Any questions about any of that? No. All right. Well, Ms. Shank, welcome to Drug Court. We're really excited to get to work with you. David Lawrence Center is already in person. I think probation, they're going to see you in person Monday, but I think they're still emerging from pandemic procedures as is the court, like I said, a few more weeks before we'll be fully in person here. So um, there'll be a little bit, you're coming in during a transition period, but everything's going in a really good direction. And we're excited to start bringing more people into our court. So I will see you on Zoom on the video conference Tuesday afternoon for your first session of drug court. But David Lawrence and probation will see you first thing on Monday, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, welcome Ms. Shank. this yes um hang on one second don't disconnect until i verify that the judgment's got everything and that i don't have any other questions for counsel yeah you can scroll down please everything concurrent We're all set, and then the final count. Okay, yeah, I think we're all set, I accept. Okay, we can, that concludes our docket.